Hello, everyone. For those of you joining us, welcome to the Radical Exchange Annual Conference. For our next session will be quadratic funding, past, present, and future. I'll turn it over to Kevin to introduce himself and begin our session. Hi, Katie. Thanks so much for having me. And hi to the Rado Radical Exchange community. Uh, very excited to be giving this talk to the Radical Exchange community. Um, I was at the, the physical Radical Exchange conference back in Detroit a couple years ago, and it's great to see the movement growing and uh, to, to see all the excitement about the ideas online today at the Radical Exchange conference. The, the title of my talk today is WTF is Quadratic Funding. I am Kevin Owaki. And uh, I come to you live from Boulder, Colorado, where I'm the organizer of the Boulder Blockchain Meetup, the founder and CEO of the Gitcoin Project, which is backed by Consensus. And thank you to Consensus. I would not be here in order to talk about quadratic funding and the work that we're doing with quadratic funding without Consensus. So uh, quadratic funding, uh, the title of my talk is WTF is QF, and I've got about eight things that I want to tell you about quadratic funding and the experiments that we're doing with quadratic funding on Gitcoin live today at Gitcoin.co. So quadratic funding is economics. Back in 2018, when Vitalik and Glenn met, uh, they were both part of separate movements, Vitalik part of the Ethereum movement, and uh, Glenn and the Radical Exchange community also doing their own important work. Um, and they started exchanging notes about how quadratic voting could be used to fund public goods. And what came back was this concept of quadratic funding. So the idea of basically taking uh, capital constraints and using them to apply funding to a group of projects uh, according to according to a formula, and that formula is is uh, is is basically the amount received by a project would be proportional to the square of the sum of the square roots of the contributions received. So basically, this is a new design for philanthropic or publicly funded seed funding uh, to allow for an optimal provision of decentralized. Uh, ecosystem grant funding. And so basically the idea here is that uh, we're, we're raising a crowdfunding campaign in which there's a matching fund and it's distributed to projects in the matching fund according to this formula. Um, and the cool thing about this formula is, is that even if you aren't uh, a mathy person, uh, maybe during this presentation, I can convince you that this is the mathematically optimal way to fund public goods that the community broadly cares about. And the reason for that is, is that this formula optimizes for the broad uh, community and not for the, uh, in, in, not for the whales in the community. And I just think that that's really exciting. We finally have a way to distribute public goods that the community actually really, really cares about. And uh, and, and, and that's a really important, important thing to allocate to the projects that the community is actually going to use. Quadratic funding is about incentives. So basically, how do you realign incentives to give out money in a more democratic way from a more bottoms up perspective? Um, if you're an engineer like me, you could imagine this idea of a heuristic maximali maximalization in which you have an agent, basically a person, who's trying to maximize some heuristic of value that they're getting out of a system. And the idea here is that as an agent, you make different decisions about what you're going to do in the world in order to maximize their heuristic. A common one is how am I going to increase my bank account balance and improve the lives of, of my family in the world. But sometimes that'll be counter to other heuristics that are around in the community. Uh, like, for example, uh, am I contributing to the well-being of, of public goods around me? Maybe uh, pollution is, is something that isn't a heuristic that I'm optimizing for when I'm increasing my bank account balance. And so uh, as people in the world, we are subject to conflicted influences all the time in the world. And I think that one of the challenges is really 
what do we do when some of the, the things that we're working on have different incentives with each other? Wouldn't it be better to live in a world in which the incentives that are governing our behavior are uh, in line with each other and not, uh, not taking away from each other? So one of the ideas that we have in the blockchain space is what if you could take the incentive systems that we're subject to as agents in an economic system and when you stack them on top of each other, what if we could build an economic system that was uh, basically in all the incentives were aligned with each other as opposed to constrained with each other. And so this is one of the things that we're sort of working on when we implement quadratic funding in practice. How do we, how do we make sure that incentives are aligned with, with one another? Um, another way of thinking about this is through a concept that is conventionally called bentoism. So basically as an economic actor, do you optimize only for what's good for you right now? Or do you optimize for what's good for you in the future? Are you only optimizing for what's good for you? Or are you optimizing what's good for us uh, as a group of people? So are you optimizing for the commons in addition to your own economic output? So uh, if you think about the use case of open source software, um, basically as an agent in an economic system, you get a lot of value out of open source software. And I think that that's really, really cool thing, but uh, you're actually sort of neglecting the commons when you, when you take open source software and you don't give back to it because there's a maintainer out there who wrote that software and they have a non-zero marginal cost to supporting new people who are, who are consuming the open source software. And, one of the things that Gitcoin is doing is our mission is to grow open source. We think that open source software creates a lot of value for the world. And one of the things that we really want to do is we want to change the incentives of open source software so that uh, basically the people who are building the open source software are supported. And so you can augment the incentives of con consumption of open source software using something like quadratic funding, which I will show you later in this presentation. But um, the cool thing about quadratic funding, that mathematically optimal formula that, that I told you about five minutes ago, is that your donation, if you only do, donate $10, you can get 200 and something in matching funds for that donation. And so you're fundamentally shifting the value trade-offs and the incentives for someone contributing to open source software with quadratic funding. And I think that that's really cool. Uh, another thing that we think about a lot when we think about quadratic funding is this idea of public goods. So basically, if you're uh, um, if you're basically uh, a an, an agent in an economic system, um, there's this there's this idea that public goods are non-rivalrous and non-excludable. So uh, we traditionally think about markets. We think about how they produce private goods like uh, foods or cars or other consumer goods. But uh, for things that we really rely on as a society is uh, are like clean air or national defense or things that are non-excludable from different agents in the economic system. And so you have to plan separately for the distribution of, of, of those goods. And sometimes these goods are really, really important. So if you think about uh, pollution, for example, uh, Clean air and clean water is something that we all rely on in order to have healthy ecosystems, in order to have healthy lungs and bodies. And um, you basically, the, the support of the maintenance of that public good is, is something that everyone benefits from, whether or not they participate in the market or not. Same thing with public infrastructure things like roads and bridges that as economic actors, we all benefit from the infrastructure around us. And even if you're not using the roads directly yourselves, the food and, and good private goods that you consume likely have used that public good. And I think that one that uh, is really important for us recently is uh, in, the, in the digital age is, is privacy against surveillance is also a public goods problem, a tragedy of the commons. How do you basically make sure that the average everyday citizen has tools to stand up against the, the surveillance state? So those are public goods and quadratic funding is actually really, really well optimized for the support of, of public goods on an aggregate stage. And, and the reason for that is, is, is that it takes the incentives on an individual uh, on an individual basis and, and changes the incentive gradient such that 
you have an incentive to support public goods. So it's one of the reasons why I'm really excited about public goods. The other reason that I'm really excited about public goods is that, uh, or, or, about quadratic funding, is that quadratic funding is really prescient right now. Um, it's happening just in time. And in order to illustrate this point, uh, I want to zoom out a little bit and talk about some of the different epochs that our civilization has gone through, uh, through humanity has gone through. Uh, so over time, there have been several macro shifts in, in how humanity has been organized. Uh, the hunter-gatherer stage where small bands of humans roamed around literally hunting and gathering for food. Um, we've been reorganized into the agricultural age in which we stopped roaming and we started farming in our local area in order to support ourselves. And um, in each of these ages, humanity transcended and included the old paradigm into the new paradigm. And so when humanity shifted from the agricultural age into the industrial age, we had these repeatable processes that allowed for increased production, mass migration towards cities, leading towards increases in uh, more output and more advanced goods and things like arts and technology. Um, and then we eventually moved on from the industrial age where we are in the transition now from the industrial age to the information age in which the mechanism for organization for our society is going to be the public good. And so this is still an ongoing transition, but you could argue that we've been abruptly cast into the information age in the last few months because of the transition of social distancing and all of the remote work that's happening. And the fact that we now have to administer the institutions that we've relied upon online and quadratic funding is an information age native native thing that that we can that we can administer using the web and one of the things that i think is is really a key piece of technology here and i'm really excited about is the idea of leveraging blockchain for for the distribution of goods and services in the information age so gitcoin and quadratic funding on Gitcoin is built on Ethereum, the world computer. And so what if we could evolve capitalism in the information age into a tool that manages the trust, trust and coordination in a way that's completely extensible by everyone? Um, Ethereum at its, at its core is about creating games with transparent tool rules that can't change on you. That's the founding myth of Ethereum, and it's still true to me. So uh, there's, this, there's this sort of idea in the crypto space about building something like what we call a crypto city. So basically the insight is that these blockchain networks, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, and other networks are like a city. So basically you've got a uh, public infrastructure that everyone relies on. And then you've got people that are moving to the city that are taking advantage of the public infrastructure in order to build their own public and private good systems on top of this infrastructure. And what the Ethereum virtual machine does is that it allows you to manage trust and then it allows you to manage power uh, in, in your economic system. And so um, we're experimenting with, from first principles, the opportunity to support public goods in an information age native way, in an information age native environment. And I think that that's, that's really cool. And like I said, it's a prescient thing. From a civilizational aspect, I think that it's very necessary right now to start experimenting with how we scale up our civilization for the web. And what's really cool is that we're seeing it happen. It is happening now. Um, on Gitcoin, so I'm finally getting around to telling you about Gitcoin, the startup that I'm working on. Our common mission is to grow and sustain open source software. Open source software provides $400 billion worth of value every year to the economic system. And software developers that work on open source are just working on it nights and weekends away from their family. They're not getting paid all that much to do it. Maybe they're getting some sort of reputation for doing it. I think that's fundamentally unjust. I think that the value captured by open source software developers should be much closer to the value created. And I think that open source software developers should be able to pay their mortgage with the work that they're doing in open source software. And we're lucky that in the blockchain ecosystem, we now have billions of dollars of capital that's no longer going to some back office on Wall Street. It's now going to open source software developers and Gitcoin. Uh, basically, what we're trying to do is we're building an ecosystem for software developers to deliver that capital. 
So what I think about our what we're doing for software developers is that we're sort of building a Disneyland for software developers with lots of different rides that you can go on, quests that you can do together, you can meet people, and there's earning opportunities, leveraging quadratic funding and 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 other things. And and what we're doing is we're building an information age crypto city in which you can learn, earn, and, and meet other software developers and work on open source software, uh, work in the commons, work on private goods, and work on public goods. And there's just a default towards open source software, which is, which is a public good on the, on the Gitcoin platform. So uh, Gitcoin Grants is the actual case study that I'm going to be telling you about today. Gitcoin Grants is kind of like a crypto native Patreon. In every quarter, we raise about 200K worth of funding that we distribute through quadratic funding. So uh, if you go to getcoin.co slash grants, you can see that we actually have a campaign going on right now. And the Radical Exchange Foundation is raising money on Gitcoin grants. You can see from this page that the Radical Exchange Foundation has an estimated match right now of about 741 DAI. One DAI is just equal to $1. It's a stable coin in which one DAI is always equal to $1. And this is because we've gotten 13 contributors from the community that have contributed to this Gitcoin grant. And the cool thing about this is the psychology. Like I said, a one DAI contribution, a $1 contribution can be worth $64 in matching funds. I mean, we should all be contributing to the Radical Exchange Foundation on Gitcoin grants. And it, because it's such a powerful mechanism for voting our preferences uh, in, in delivering these matching funds to the Radical Exchange Foundation. And so I think that, uh, you know, the fact that this is live now and the Radical Exchange Foundation can earn ether, can, can get coins, so to speak, is a really powerful thing. And it's a really powerful way for, for you to vote with your preferences in order to fund to fund public goods. All right. So quadratic funding on Gitcoin is about iteration and learning from the data systems that we've built. So we're on sixth, our sixth round of quadratic funding on Gitcoin grants. The first one was in Q1 of 2019. We raised 200 contributions worth about 38K in 2019. And this is what I call our economic graph right here. So each node in the network is a user uh, or a grant on the system and each, each edge is a transaction between two nodes on the network. And so we're basically building a mesh network of funding for public goods using quadratic funding on Gitcoin and Gitcoin grants. And what you're going to see as I roll through this deck and you see that round two had 400 contributions and 60K raise is that that mesh network of preferences is getting denser every time we run a Gitcoin grants round. So basically, uh, we, we in round three raised 2,000 contributions and 270K, round four, 5,000 contributions and 350K. Round five, we raised 8,000 contributions and 475K. And what you can see is that we're really building this dash, dense mesh network of preferences through which the community is self-supporting itself in a decentralized way, in a democratic way. Remember, this is the mathematically optimal way to fund democratically public good software. And so you're going to see this dense network of preference, preferences through which we're we're funding open source software on, on, on Gitcoin. And I think that this is one of the really, really, really cool things. Gitcoin's mission is to grow and sustain open source software. Open source software is a public goods problem and we are leveraging quadratic funding in order to solve the public goods problem on Gitcoin grants. And um, so quadratic funding is sort of at the heart of our mission, which is to enable software developers to work for the open internet. If you're working for some scale corporation in a cubicle farm and uh, you're in meetings all day and you're not actually contributing to open source, well, there's a solution for you and it's to do quadratic funding on Gitcoin. It's to work with other software developers out in the open on open source software. And it is my mission for the 30 million software developers in the world for them to be as privileged as I am to get to work on open source software every day. And um, you know, I think that we're starting to have an impact 
on what people are doing in the world with open source software. We've done $5 million in gross marketplace value over the last 18 to 24 months for open source software developers, about 300 to 500 K per month, depending on the month and whether we're running a quadratic funding round or not. And it is my goal for people to be able to quit their jobs and to just work on open source software, uh, whether it's through quadratic funding or, or through other mechanisms on Gitcoin grants. And, and the good news is that if you want to work out in the open, if you want to work on open source software, quadratic funding is live now on Gitcoin grants. So uh, if you go to gitcoin.co slash grants, you can post your own grant and you can raise money for the work that you're doing today. And round six is ongoing now in summer of, of 2020. We've got uh, about 300K that's been raised so far in quadratic funding and there's two weeks left in this round. So um, knock on wood, it's gonna be our biggest round yet. And I'm uh, really excited how easy we've made it to contribute to uh, public goods on Gitcoin grants using uh, using quadratic funding. Uh, this is just a really quick demo video of what you can expect when you go to gitcoin.co slash grants. You can see here that I'm checking out uh, a grant that supports privacy, a grant that supports journalism, also a public good in the uh, in the 21st century, and the RadX Foundation. And uh, with one, one, one or two transactions, I can support multiple public goods, get matching funds using quadratic voting and quadratic funding on Gitcoin grants. And it's, it's, it's just super simple. So I'm pretty excited about the work that we're doing with quadratic funding on Gitcoin grants. And I have to just tell you that we're just, we're just getting started with, with what's possible here. So um, if you go to Vitalik Buterin's review of Gitcoin grants round five, you will see uh, that, that he has said that Gitcoin grants is establishing itself as a significant pillar of the Ethereum ecosystem. Gitcoin grants and quadratic funding and are a, a, a significant pillar of the Ethereum ecosystem. And more and more projects are relying on for some or all of their support. And so it has a relatively low amount of funding at present and inevitably funds everything, underfunds everything it touches. But we're hoping over time to figure out a way to increase the amount of funding that is going into the matching pools. And so I have actually recently published a plan for how we go to 500K per quarter for quadratic funding and Gitcoin grants to $5 million per quarter. And one of our metrics at Gitcoin is how many lives can we change? How many people can quit their job and just work on open source software? At $5 million per quarter, a flipping lot of people can quit their jobs and still be able to pay their mortgage, still be able to support their lifestyle and work on, on Gitcoin grants and quadratic funding. There is a uh, problem that we're working on right now. It's a technical problem called civil resistance and collusion resistance. And building a collusion resistant and civil resistant mechanism for quadratic funding is actually really important because it, it it's just basically one of the risks of the of the mechanism to 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 be civil resistant and um i i, I don't know how far i'm going to go into that in in this talk but uh we really want to scale up the amount of funding that's available through quadratic funding and um and 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 solving that problem is is on the roadmap so that we can increase the amount of funding the other thing that we're doing is that we're exiting our weird little neon crypto niche and we're launching downtownstimulus.com very soon, which is just basically a quadratic funding app for the mainstream. You don't have to know anything about Ethereum. You don't have to install a web wallet. In order to use it, you can just do quadratic funding with, with credit cards. And I'm really excited about this because um, I was just the there's so much economic distress happening right now in the post COVID world. And I think that downtown businesses are supporting a livable downtown, which is a public good. And I'm really miffed that all the economic stimulus here in the United States has gone to large corporations. I just think that that is fundamentally fundamentally wrong in, in, in that uh, more money isn't going to uh, a distributed scalable mechanism that supports public goods that a broad swath of the community actually cares about. So we're going to do a 30K round of quadratic funding with Downtown Boulder, and it's going to be called downtownstimulus.com. Uh, it's going live in, in, in weeks, not months, to support businesses in Downtown Boulder. And if it 
goes well, then we're going to be selling it in other jurisdictions across the country and hopefully in the world. So we'd love to franchise this out to your jurisdiction, uh, to anyone who wants to democratically fund public goods in their area. And regardless whether or not you care about blockchains, we want to be able to uh, support public goods that, that you care about. <clears throat> Quadratic funding is allowing us to break through constraints as a society and to reach the goals that uh, we as humanity want to reach. So if you think about the different constraints that humanity faces as it goes to try to reach its goals, there are, there are constraints that are applied to us from first principles, from just the order of the universe. And I would just describe those as the constraints that are handed down from mathematics and from physics. Um, and then there are the constraints that we self-impose on ourselves as, as society. And I would describe those layers roughly as the power structures inherent in our society, the laws that we follow, the how we finance our, ourselves, how does the media and culture co-mingle in, in, in order to help us reach our goals. And, and, and I think it would be naive to say that humanity has the same goals and a lot of times different people in, in our civilization have different goals than each other. But I think the democratic funding of each other's businesses and of public goods is a goal that even in a pluralistic society that we should all be able to support. And so one of the things I think is really cool is how quadratic funding augments the incentive structure and commingles the culture, media, and finance layers of the human civilizational stack and to, to mix our, our, our constraints and to make them all sort of play differently with each other. And the stack that we're using to do this right now is Gitcoin, which is deploying quadratic funding at the sort of like media and finance and culture layer, and uh, Ethereum, which is basically a series of smart contracts which can augment the power structures upon which society stands. And um, in a very small way for now, but maybe in a big way in the future, uh, this new stack can be more friendly to democratic mechanisms if we program it with our values, if we can now program our values into our money and we can build more democratic systems for supporting public goods, then that is my great hope for the information age that we can um, break through the constraints that have been imposed on us in order to support the common man and, to, and woman and to support, uh, and, and to support public goods that the uh, community actually really cares about. Quadratic funding is democracy, democracy in, 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 in practice, in the information age. So as we think about what kind of network we're building for our uh, network-enabled species, do we want to be a dictator-driven uh, network species? Do we want to have a series of oligarchs through which we're uh, that, that basically hand down power and hand down fund funding for public goods uh, or don't decide not to hand down funding for public goods, depending on what their incentives is. What is, is the relationship that we're gonna have to other nodes in the network species going to be an asymmetric power relationship or is it going to be a symmetric power relationship in which we share power with each other? And I think that as you start to distribute power out to the edges, as you start to push it out to the edges, you start to get into uh, more of a representative dem democratic network species or maybe possibly a completely peer to peer mesh network species in which we all support each other through a pluralistic approach and, and, and basically everyone's vote counts in, in, in a way that optimizes for the, uh, the broad swath of the population as opposed to the very rich and powerful. Quadratic funding is about community. So um, we've basically got about 800 Gitcoin grants that are alive right now. And um, there is no vetting process. Anyone can put up a Gitcoin grant and the community is going to be the ones who decide where the money goes, not Gitcoin itself. So um, we're re relying on a market mechanism to figure out where the money goes. And I'm really just really humbled by the community that has been evolving on the Gitcoin grants platform from radical exchange uh, to democracy earth which is building public infrastructure for governance and identity on the ethereum network to public 
goods that are beyond software to ethub who is creating uh, who's fighting a information asymmetry in the blockchain space and basically supporting what I view as 21st century journalism. Um, Prism by Prismatic Labs is an open source software project that is building an ETH 2.0 client in Go. And it's one of the most foundational pieces of the Ethereum ecosystem. And they're about to raise uh, about $5,000 through the Gitcoin grants mechanism. And I'm just the 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 projects on on the Gitcoin grants mechanism that are really having an impact on the the community and quadratic funding is really having an impact on them is just really really uh, a super humbling thing for me to see all these really talented people who uh, may or may not have a business model for what they're doing and are able to raise funds on the uh, on the Gitcoin grants platform and leverage quadratic funding to support causes that. Uh, that otherwise may not have been supported. And I think that there's there's some uh, really, really important causes that, that we really need to rally around. So I'd encourage you to go check it out after you see this presentation. Um, quadratic funding is community at the aggregate level, but it's also you at the individual level. So, um, you know, one of the things that I really want uh, everyone to realize when I post this mesh network of, of jobs visualization is that each node in this network is an individual three-dimensional human, probably from a different part of the world, probably with a completely different background than you, probably self-identifies in a different race, gender, uh, or geographic area than you ever did. And so we're building a mesh network of, of human beings. And the preferences of the many outweigh the preferences of the few on, on quadratic funding. And so quadratic funding is really about you and the votes that you have for what public goods you think are are important. And um, I think that it is the fact that we are weighting the preferences of individuals that means that this is how we're gonna drive completion of our mission to work for the open internet on Gitcoin. And um, you know, if you wanna check it out, then you're more than welcome to go to gitcoin.co slash grants and check out the work that we're doing to support public goods with quadratic funding today. So that is my presentation. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation about quadratic funding. And I hope that you'll check out Gitcoin Grants in Downtown Stimulus and contribute to projects that you care about today. Let's see, I see in the show notes, there's a couple of questions. Uh, Katie, I guess I'll just rattle these off if, if that's cool with you. That works. Okay, sounds good. So a uh, question from Anonymous, who is your graphics designer? Their work is brilliant. Um, so our graphics designer is uh, gitcoin.co slash goistf, G-U-I-S-T-F. They're a user on the Gitcoin platform who I agree does really amazing work. And um, uh, Goist and this other developer, or sorry, designer Octavian have done some really great work. If someone sends me a tweet on Twitter, I can introduce you if you wanna use their stuff for your presentations. The next question in the show notes is a question from Anonymous. What types of mechanisms are being considered to provide consistent funding to veteran projects versus new hotness projects per round? Yeah, so um, if you read Vitalik's Gitcoin Grants round five, here, I'm just gonna actually turn off my screen share because I think that there might be too much going on right now. Um, so if you read Gitcoin, uh, Vitalik's, round five review of Gitcoin grants, you'll see basically like a very uh, mathy answer to this question. And I think that Vitalik is, has sort of been my partner in crime in, sort of in terms of designing the mechanism. Um, we had a, a, a pioneered a standard called EIP 1337, which was recurring payments on the Ethereum blockchain and no one ever used it. I mean, like 3% of transactions on Gitcoin grants were recurring. And so we kind of were trying to figure out why. And I think that people just aren't, aren't, aren't comfortable with having money debited out of their crypto wallets on a month over month basis. Uh, they aren't as used to it as we are in the SaaS Web2 model. And so uh, we've basically moved on to a new mechanism to support stable funding for projects on Gitcoin grants. And that is that we're taking one third of the value of the contributions from round five and just applying it to round six, which should 
provide a stable base of funding for projects that consistently do well on on the platform. And you know, our goal again is to change lives here. To uh, Vitalik calls this the quadratic freelancer, but who can quit their jobs and just work for quadratic funding subsidies on the open internet is a design goal. And so uh, I guess the answer is that we're, we're doing the one third thing now, but if you wanna check out Vitalik's post, he can go into all the other cool mechanism design that we can do to support stable funding. Question from Anonymous, are there any consideration towards supporting any other non-Ethereum crypto blockchains or even non-crypto but open source projects? Yeah, so, Yes and yes is the TLDR answer. Um, we're basically gonna do Gitcoin grants on other blockchains at some point soon. We just had a successful Zcash crowdfunding campaign. Just uh, we're, we're in talks with other foundations of other blockchain networks to also apply quadratic funding in their crypto cities. And I'm really excited to scale this mechanism both broadly to other communities, other blockchains, and and deeply. So basically, how do we go from 500K a quarter to 5 million a quarter in Ethereum? Uh, I don't have any plans to do non-crypto, but open source projects, but if anyone knows the Linux Foundation or the Apache Foundation or any, any projects that wanna do quadratic funding in a non-crypto way, we're building the infrastructure to do that. And um, we think quadratic funding will be a powerful economic force in the information age, not only for open source software, but for all sorts of public goods. So uh, if, if you have an idea for that, then I want to talk to you. Send me a, a message on Twitter and, and we'll nerd out. From Grace, is there any vetting process? How can we know our money is really going to the cause that is posted on Gitcoin? Uh, there is no vetting process. Gitcoin does not want to be a centralized intermediary that gatekeeps who can be posting a grant on, on Gitcoin. Um, we do have a flagging process. So if you post a project that is not a public good or is in some cases, we've seen one or two just like outright frauds that have posted to Gitcoin grants, then the community will typically flag it. Uh, we will tweet it out. And if a, a broad portion of the community actually agrees that it doesn't belong on Gitcoin grants, then we typically, we've removed one or two of those, but we do not want to gatekeep which projects are on Gitcoin grants and we want the market to decide where the money actually goes. So there's two parts of this question. Is there any vetting process and how can we know the money is really going to the cause that is posted on Gitcoin? Uh, I think I've answered the first one. There is no vetting process. It's completely market driven. How can we know our money is really going to the cause that is posted on Gitcoin? So um, basically the answer to that question, and I'm just gonna share my screen and show you, I feel like showing is more powerful than telling you. Um, <clears throat> so if I go into this Gitcoin grant for DeFi Dad, who uh, is basically a 21st century journalist in, in my opinion, um, I can go to their recipient funding address and I can go to look at their token transactions and I can see that the funding is actually being sent to them. And yeah, the cool thing about blockchains is that they're transparent. You can see the funding coming in and that's the proof of the funding being there. So uh, that's for the crowd, crowdfund donations. Um, you can just see those rolling in all through the Gitcoin grants round. Um, the matching, so the matching amount which is uh, which is basically displayed on the Gitcoin grants right here, the current match. So that amount uh, is basically a match estimate that we compute about on the order of every ten minutes, and then we update the user interface to let you know what your con your contribution matching will be. Uh, that amount will not actually be distributed to DeFi Dad until the end of the round. And uh, we're basically, what we do is, is we've got a, a process that will, will pay out these, these, these grantees and those transactions will also be on the blockchain. So if you wanted to verify that Gitcoin was giving out the matching funds, then you could do that using the blockchain as well. Next question from Grace, how do we distribute power out to the edges when already most of the money is centralized in very few people's hands? Yeah, so um, I think that the key part here is that you're separating who is funding the matching rounds from the decision of where that money goes and is distributed to. 
So basically, um, there is a credibly neutral mechanism which is dictating the the formula for where where the funding where the funding is going. So if you go to the top of my presentation, you'll see this this formula that that Glenn and Vitalik came up with, which is the sum of the square root of all of the contributions. So this formula. So basically, the money is in Gitcoin's wallet right now. We're holding on to it while the while the matching is happening. But it's this formula that actually dictates that the funds where the funds are going to go. And um, you know, this is the mathematically optimal way to fund democratically public goods. So I think that you know it's a valid criticism of of where does the money come from. But the key is that uh, this formula is is what to, is what dictates where the funding goes. And it's this formula that is optimized for democratic supporting of public goods. So um, I think that that's how we distribute power to the edges. But uh, you know, I do think that we need more consistent funding mechanisms uh, for, for this in, in order to make sure that it continues to happen. What is the ETA for sign up via Twitter? Oh, hi, Fanny. How's it going? Great to see you. Um, yeah, we had that on the slate for this round, but we just didn't get to it. I am pretty bad with estimates, but I, we're going to give it another shot in rounds in round seven. Um, for actually, I should have explained this better before I got into the answer. So what is the ETA for sign up via Twitter? Uh, right now you have to sign up for Gitcoin using GitHub. And um, that's just kind of an artifact of the fact that we are a platform that serves software developers and we're sort of outgrowing that niche. And so the question is, when will I be able to sign up via Twitter? And the answer is we're working on it for round seven, which will be sometime in the fall. Question from Anonymous, which is just three emoji claps. Thank you. Thank you, Anonymous, for your emoji claps. Question from Anonymous, where should we look to find the actual formula and code used in quadratic funding. I, I don't actually know how I can give you the URL because, well, maybe I can just put it into this document that I'm working on with, with Katie. But uh, basically the answer to your question is, Gitcoin is open source software. We would not really be serving our mission uh, of supporting open source software if we were a closed source project ourselves. And so the cool thing is that you can you can check out the the answer to that question on our GitHub repo, and I'll just put this uh, the the link to this file in in the Google Doc that I'm jamming on with Katie. But yeah, uh, basically uh, this is about 500 lines of code, and it implements the quadratic funding formula and and uh, some of the other goodies that Glenn and Vitalik have come up with. And um, one of the things we're thinking about doing is releasing this as a open source package that's configurable that you can just drop into your package without having to re-implement it yourself. So if you want to see that happen, I don't know, tweet me and just remind me. I'll I'll tell our, our data guy that that the people care about it and we'll make sure that it happens. Uh, question from Anonymous. So do devs pay personal income tax off of these donations? So if my lawyer was here, he would be tapping me on the shoulder and saying, Kevin, you can't give anyone tax advice. And uh, my lawyer is right. I cannot give any tax advice. But um, depending on the jurisdiction that you're in, yes, you are obligated to pay uh, taxes on any donations that, that you get. Uh, Gitcoin does provide an export of all the donations that you've received in your settings. So uh, it's up to you to figure out in your local jurisdiction whether or not you owe taxes. And we've got an easy CSV export of those donations for you. Question from Anonymous. What happens when the pool of money runs out? How is that redistributed? So when the pool of money runs out, um, basically, what will happen with a Gitcoin grants round is that we're doing 175K in, in this Gitcoin grants round. And, and basically, when the community has raised enough money that 175K is allocated, what, what, uh, what, what we'll do is basically uh, we'll, we'll kind of reach, re, reach our matching threshold 
through which every new do, new donation will result in new money allocated through the mechanism and grants will start competing with each other in a zero sum way for the money that's being allocated in the mechanism. So if you uh, say we reach the 175K allocation and, and, and then you contribute to the DeFi Dad grant and for $1 and DeFi Dad is going to get $75 in matching, well, that $75 is going to come out of the other grants that have that that because we've reached, reached the threshold and it's now a zero sum game. So basically when the pool of money runs out, then for the rest of the round, while the round is open, then you're basically competing with other grants for, for that funding. All right, I have five more minutes left. Thank you for that, that heads up. Could you speak a little bit about the technical solutions for avoiding collusion? Oh man, how can I do that in five minutes? The other question is, how can you decide the interval for durations between rounds? What's worth considering in that decision? I'm going to take that one first because that's easier and I can actually answer that in less than five minutes. Uh, so the interval between rounds is just basically how long does it take us? Gitcoin grants is highly iterative and we're building new features in between each round. And so the time in between each round is, is basically just our time to iterate on the mechanism. We built bulk checkout this round and we built SMS verification and a bunch of other goodies. And so um, that's one way that we've decided. Another way is just that like, we're kind of limited by the amount of funding that people want to put up into matching pools. And so far uh, we've gotten that matching funding from large, large, well, well-meaning whales in the Ethereum community from the Ethereum foundation. We've gotten a little bit from consensus and um, right now there's just not enough funding to be doing it every month, unfortunately. So um, I, my, I'm hopeful in the future that we're going to find new sources of funding that are funding public goods in an information age native way and that we'll be able to do rounds every month instead of every quarter and uh, we can create way more quadratic freelancers if we can do that. All right, so the last question is the most hairy one and uh, could you talk a little bit about the technical solutions for avoiding collusion. So um, one of the one of the, the tools that's out there is called Macy, which stands for Minimal Anti-Collusion Infrastructure. And what it basically does is it makes it impossible to prove who, who contributed to a grant. So basically, if you were going to collude with another actor in order to take funds away from other grants and to support your grant, then you would need to prove to that other actor that you actually made that contribution. And so without the ability to prove that, then it's harder to collude. Um, I personally, uh, I, I personally uh, think that that's in a way very elegant, but we have not uh, implemented that into Gitcoin grants yet. Um, one of the things we have basically uh, a whole anti-Sybil and anti-collusion infrastructure that I've coded, and um, it's kind of really interesting to see people try to break the mechanism. The, the most common way to do it is with a Sybil attack. Um, Symbol attack just basically means that you make up a new identity and you pretend to be someone else because the mechanism optimizes for new identities contributing to the to the to the mechanism. So that's like a very basic, uh, almost fraud-like instance of collusion. And um, I uh, I have decided not to publicize too much about exactly what we're doing from an anti-Sybil standpoint because the more I make public about the the civil attack infrastructure that we've built, the more it will enable attackers to become sophisticated and evolve past it. So, not talking too much about that, but um, you know, it, it but publicly. But if people are funding grants rounds and they want to show see the civil infrastructure in order to in order to understand it, then I'm happy to happy to let people who are actually supporting the rounds know how we're protecting their money. I have one more minute. What do you guys want to talk about? Or should I just get out of the way and you can just look at my weird virtual background for the rest of the round, for the rest of the presentation? Bitcoin, it's built on Ethereum, quadratic funding. <laughs> this was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having me, Radical, Radical Exchange. I really, really love the content that's been coming out of this event. And I hope to see you all in person 
at the next radical exchange event. Uh, quadratic funding is good, public goods are good, and I'll see you all on the internet. Bye-bye.